All right, we're very pleased to welcome Brandon Plant to the show at SensTalk underscore on Twitter. But you could have been following him on YouTube since 2010? How long ago have you had? 2013. It's been a while. How old were you in 2013, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, I'm 20 now, so I was 10 years old, 10, 11 years old. I mean, we we were talking before this, uh, Ross. Uh, (laughs) There's certainly a progression over the years, that's for sure. It's been quite a while uh, since I started this. Yeah, it's just insane to see. And and uh, we mentioned like when we thought of the behind the blog series, you were one of the first people because we Thank wanted you. to kind of, um, you know, we want to have that sense of community, us sends bloggers, sends content creators, podcasters, whatever. We want to be united as a community and we want to amplify each other and, and hear each other's stories. And I'm fascinated to hear your story because Ross and I started this a couple of years ago. We were in our second stint of college. We're in our mid twenties. We kind of already uh, established ourselves and what we we're trying to do. Whereas you, like you mentioned, you were a kid just being like, you know what, I'm just going to make these videos, put them out there, see what happens. And now Look at you now, Brandon. Like you're 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 still going strong, and uh, you've built up a massive following yourself. So, uh, I want to let's Thank let's you. dial it all the way back. When you're 10 years old, what clicks in your mind to be like, I love this team. I'm going to start creating content because back then, creating content was not what it is now. No, certainly not. And I have to give a shout out to Noah Luden as well, uh, one of my best friends, uh, one of the co-founders, I guess you can call it, of Sense Talk. Uh, it was in 2013. It was a Sens versus Habs. Great series, by the way. Probably one yeah. of the better ones in a recent memory. I think the brawl, you know, that was an incredible Epic. moment, right? Epic moment. Um, you know, Paul McLean, you know, with the the stash and everything. Just a beauty. Uh, great times. So that's when I was really starting to become like a passionate, diehard Sens fan. Noah as well. Um, so one day, I think it was game one. Before game one, we said, what the hell? Let's put out a video. Let's. What else are we doing? I came over for the game. We had like two hours to, to, to kill. Um, and at that time, we weren't really interested in video games. And, you know, as you can probably tell, I like to talk. Noah likes to talk. <laughs> so we said, why not talk into a video and put it onto YouTube? So we did that. Um, and we kind of just kept on doing it for the rest of the series. And after that, uh, to 2014, 2015, Noah kind of dropped out of it. He kind of wanted to do his own thing, which is totally fine. Um, but I kept it going because, you know what, I kind of liked it. You know, my passion for the team was getting uh, every single day more and more passionate. And then it was kind of like, perfect timing because 2015 was when I was kind of wondering whether or not I should stop a couple of years wasn't gaining any traction like 50 70 views a video you know less than 100 subscriptions you know you know nothing wrong with that but at the end of the day yeah pulling it up <laughs> oh look at that yeah <laughs> um but yeah like in 2015 that's when the Hamburglar like started right so yep. that was a crazy run and obviously that sucked me in and I haven't been able to leave ever since you can see it there I mean Alverson leaving to the Sens to the Red Wings. Don't even play that video. That You can see my heartbreak there. It's just terrible. Look at, I mean, look at that little kid right there. It's been <laughs> over 10 years. Can we play it? Go ahead. Yeah. All okay, right. Let's, let's, sure. play let's, play let's play it. Let's play it. Hey, um, Danny Austin just moved to the Red Wings for a point, from the Saturdays for a 5.5 million dollar contract for one year. Trying to make a couple of things. <laughs> just had enough. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's oh, awesome. Oh, man. What and a throwback. But no, dude, it's super impressive. I love that. Thank you. Dude, you had almost yeah. 200 views on that one. Let's go. Woo. Oh, yeah. I remember back then I got like 50 views and I was certainly uh, celebrating, you know, having my root beer. No real beer. Still a kid at the time. But, you know, <laughs> I was having my root beer, you know, having a good time, enjoying that. But uh, at the most, most importantly, though, Alfie left. So that kind of sucked. Let's be honest. I got his jersey like two, three weeks before I had, I, and I'll go back to the whole point of like the whole story of sense talk, but man, I cannot, I still cannot believe Alverson left for that one year. I still, I just cannot believe it would happen. And when it happened, I was in shell shock to be honest with you, but yeah. going back to the sense talk story. So 2015 happened, the Hamburglar happened, got sucked in ever since. And then, you know, I just, my passion for broadcasting and uh, for the team just picked up, picked up, picked up, move forward to 2017, the best run in my you know, fandom's history, realistically. I mean, I was a fan in 2007, but I mean, I was like six. Yeah. So I wasn't, it's a little different, right? You know, when you're Definitely. a six compared to like 12, 14, 15, whatever. That's when you really start to become a passionate fan or passionate into different type of things. So 2017 happened. And then ever since then, you know, I was just sucked in. I think the reality of it is 2015 really like made me realize I love this sport. I love this team and I want to keep on doing these videos. 
And obviously the views were getting a little better in 2015 too. So that definitely was enticing. Um, then ever since 2017, you know, um, just doing my thing. Um, the game recaps, which were the staple of my channel for the last 10 years, a game, uh, like a video after every single game, recapping the game, discussing it, giving my opinions and analysis, whatever. I guess that started from the first video of Sense Talk where we were just reacting. I think the first video was, um, I think it was like the, discussing the Corey Conacher trade. It was no Luden. Nice. Uh, you, you might even be able to pull it up there. It's the first video. It's titled Sense Talk. Um, and we were just talking about Corey Conacher. Um, and I kind of set the precedent to what the type of videos we would put out there would be because it was just reactionary for the most part. Uh, and obviously over the years, it's become much more of a, you know, interesting and um, a type of content that people enjoy. People yeah. like to hear what others have to say. Um, so the last three years, <clears throat> you know, we've really made it more professional. We've added graphics, we've added text, you know, um, I've been able to finally start editing my videos. I used to just ramble for like 10, 12 minutes, sort of like right now. And then, <laughs> but instead I kind of clip it now. I'm more careful with what I put. I want to make sure it's the best content possible. Um, so over the last two years, obviously we've been doing that much more. Plus Brian Charbin, Jared Daniel Ladisa, of course, Noah Luden, Alex Martel, Alex uh, Allard. The, the great people we've added over the years have really helped uh, bring the great content that we're bringing for people, um, especially with graphics online. So it's been a crazy 10 years to just put it into, uh, you know, into end the story here, basically, where it started off as a joke just for fun. And it's really turned into I, I don't want to call it a business or a hobby, but it's kind of like my career. You know, I'm a journalist. I graduated from Ottawa U uh, uh, for journalism. So, you know, I'm going to Algonquin now for broadcasting. I mean, it's kind of turned me into who I am. So um, long story short, Sense Talk is kind of who I am and it's made me who I am. So it's been an incredible ride. And uh, I'm just really happy to be able to talk about it with you guys here on uh, this great series. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that. And what uh, what I want to follow up with uh, uh, among a bunch of things is you mentioned all those other names. So what what is everyone's role to help? Because I'm sure people want to hear peel back the onion a little bit and get to know the inner workings because everyone just sees you on camera, the sick background, you know, saying, you. doing your piece. But what's up with uh, with what the other fellas all get involved in? Yeah, so I always, um, you know, a lot of people always tell me, hey, look, Brandon, you know, this is your thing. You should always take credit, blah, blah, blah. But I understand, even though, you know, I've done most of the work, obviously, 10 years. I mean, that's there's no debate about that. Reality is a lot of the stuff I've done the last couple of years would not have been possible without some of these, if not all these guys. I mean, Giordano Ladisa, uh, he he works with, uh, you know, TV uh, stations. He has a lot of experience. And he joined me back in like 2015 when I was not even 100 subscribers. I mean, I was a small little nobody. You know what I mean? I was nobody. And he joined. He took a lot of his time to edit our intros, you know, put out some video content that I wouldn't have been able to put out such as uh, I think one of our best videos we have on our channel is the 2016, 2017 Senator pump up video that he made. And it was a fantastic video. And that kind of just shows um, some of the skills that he has. So the longer form content that you see, I mean, the shorter form stuff, like the let's talk series, the game recaps, I edit that myself. It's all done like within a couple hours after recording, but the longer form content, like the Bruce Garriock interview, the Dean Brown or any other player interview that I have, Giordano edits that. So it's 45, 50 minutes. So he edits it, he puts in the videos, he puts in the pictures, the text, the layout, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, we go back and forth. As you guys know, there's a lot of production behind the scenes. You have to kind of have a storyline. You have to have timestamps where you want this, where you want that. You guys know that, of course. But, you know. I think you're giving us too much credit. I, well, I, I, I seem yeah. to do that a lot. But, I mean, <laughs> in reality, the way I look at it is this. I mean, yeah, I do. I put out the videos. I'm doing the interviews. I'm doing most of it. But you know, without people's help, you wouldn't be able to be where you are. That's why I'm very, like, I understand that I built it a brick by brick, but at the same time, you know, the mortar in the brick, I needed people to help me with that. So, uh, Giordano Ladisa could not have started this really without him, especially the longer form content. Can't, I can't do it. I mean, I don't, my MacBook's old. I had a funny stat or funny thing, I guess. No one would know. All my Sense Talk videos, like the Let's Talk and the Game Recaps, all edited on iMovie on my phone. I mean, it's, it's on that your phone, on your phone. Yeah, exactly. wow. yeah. So I'm looking at my little phone. I mean, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop, boop. So, you know, <laughs> just, like, right. So, you know, I can't do anything on my computer. It's from like a 2014 Mac. So, wow. Um, yeah. So Giordano really helps me out. I wouldn't be able to put out those videos or those longer form content without him. Brian Charbin, you know, I actually, it's a funny story. We were, uh, it was my first class at Ottawa University. This was during COVID. So it was online. 
Um, and he sent me a little like DM on Zoom, as you guys, you know, you can send like direct messages. Um, and he met messaged me. And he's like, hey, are you Brandon Plant from SenseTalk? I'm like, yeah, yeah. So we started talking. And turns out he had st just started doing graphic design. So I said, you know what? I don't have a graphic designer. You seem pretty cool. Welcome to the team. And ever since, it's history. I mean, uh, he puts bangers after bangers out there. I mean, he is such a creative uh, graphic design artist. It's unbelievable what he comes up with. Um, and he's really helped grow our online presence. Uh, Noah Luden, like I said, he's in and out of the, you know, uh, content and stuff. He kind of had his own thing called Send Stonks that he's kind of trailed off of for now because he's going to be joining a bigger project that we're bringing out within the month. But Noah Luden's always been like, he's a brother to me, right? He's like one of my best friends. So more of an advisor. He's always there to give advice because, you know, once again, you guys know in content, you can't have one guy or two guys just leading the charge. You need to have a bunch of different people bouncing ideas off of each other to get the best polished product. So Noah helps with that. Of course, Alex Allard, we're working on a great project behind the scenes. I don't want to really want to give too much right now, but he uh, he's worked with TSN and Sportsnet, a great producer. Uh, he came to us and bringing him on has been huge because we have a big project coming. <clears throat> it's going to be a weekly thing. And, you know, I, I'll tell you guys after that. I just want to, you know, break the news right now, but it's going to be right. really, really big. And, you know, nice. having him on the team is massive. And then, of course, Alex Martel, who we just added, uh, you know, Sen Swagger, he is, you know, um, our graphic designer as well. He just started out sort of like Brian and, you know, he's putting out some good content for us too. He put out that great video. I think you guys were cameoed in um, called we're a team or whatever on YouTube. Yeah. So he uh, has yeah. great skills there too. And it's a new relationship with him and Alex, uh, you know, a lard, but you know, I'm really excited to work with both of them. They're bringing a lot of good uh, energy and content to us already. And uh, you know, I think for the 10th year of sense talk with all the guys I just mm -hmm. mentioned, including Let's myself, see. we're in for a big one guys. So I'm really excited. So stay tuned. Monday's Locked On Senators. We'll break the news of what uh, Sen's talking about. <laughs> You'll get the inside scoop, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have the announcement, that's for sure. Um, now, I want to ask you, like, for Ross and I, we started this uh, kind of like what you're talking about in school. We're friends. We like the Sen's. Let's do a podcast. It, it's good reps. It's fun, whatever. But when did you have that moment where you're like, I don't want this just to be something fun that I just – toss out and to hope for the best. When did you have that kind of moment where you're like, I feel like I've got something here. I feel like I've got a passion here. I want to start polishing this into something legit, digestible content for Sense fans. When did that happen for you? That's a capital J question, by the way. Love baby. it. Capital J journalism, baby. <laughs> Gotta love it. Uh, yeah, I think there's two parts to that question. The first part is, not a lot of people know this, but in 2014, <clears throat> I uploaded some videos, but I took a bit of a break. Um, for personal reasons, but I came back in 2015 and that's when I realized, yeah, I actually want to, you know, put a lot of work into this. I'm passionate. I want to make these videos, but the real realization was I was going to stop making these videos after high school. I mean, university, college, you got, of, of course I want to have a social life. Of course, you're busy, I wanna, yeah. you know, busy school, uh, people, friends, whatever. There's a lot of things to do. Right. So I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it after high school, but COVID happened. And we grew exponentially. I mean, I was telling you before the uh, the interview started, but I had less than 500 subscribers, I believe, uh, at the end of 2020. Now I'm above 2,000. So when we started gaining a lot during COVID, that's when I realized, and more importantly, that's also when I started uh, you know, editing my videos with iMovie on my phone. So hand in hand, people were at home, had nothing else to do but watch videos. Uh, I was at home. I had nothing else to do except make videos and the content and the, the growth was there. So it kind of was just kind of like uh, with the Hamburglar in 2015, igniting my passion. Just everything kind of came into place at the perfect time in 2020 for better or for worse. Obviously I wish there was no COVID and all that, but you know, we, I made the best out of a bad situation and you know, in turn, I mean, I'm happy because you know, like I said, I was not going to be doing it after high school. I'm certainly not going to be stopping Sense Talk anytime soon now. Uh, just because I, uh, you know, the passion in me has just been reignited. I found a way to make it work. And uh, so to answer your question, um, honestly, a couple of years ago, it's when I really realized this can be something more than just a hobby. I can make this into a minute, uh, add it to the community, of course, but turn this into something that can be, um, you know, something that's remembered, I guess you can call it, where it's it's not just rant into a video camera and put it on the YouTube, but I want to pick, I want to make content that people can actually watch enjoy and make them think about certain things too and you know question different things i i found a lot especially when i was starting this um you know a lot of people did not really put out videos there's no no one really was doing this right so i found that it, people needed a unique fan voice 
Um, and now, of course, you especially got, for the Sens, yeah, of course, of course, right? It was only it was like Don Brennan, it was like Bruce Garriock, and I mean, Don Brennan was not exactly the most pro Sens guy, and Bruce, of course, loves the Sens, but there wasn't a lot of guys out there really covering the team online. So that's kind of what I started, and now seeing you guys, Future Sicko, so many great people out there making good content. Um, yeah, it's it's just been awesome. So being Dude. able to join this community and make this content's been great. When you started Sense Talk, that's what the YouTube logo looked oh like on the God. phone. Wow, those that were good days. Yeah, that's to days. put it in perspective, right there. Oh man, insane, insane. That is actually no, I have a lot of respect. So that's nine hundred and forty-nine videos right now. Yeah. What's what's the plan for for number one thousand? Because that's sneaking up on you quick, especially if you have a new weekly project. That's just going to yeah. add to the the hurry up here. It's coming up. Yeah, I don't think he's going to fill us in on the big news, Ross. If I'm noticing a pattern here, I don't think we're going to get the leak. Oh, uh, we need an announcement. If there's if there's any place to break the news, it is on Locked On Sanders podcast. Ooh. To be fair, <laughs> maybe another but. time we'll have to come back. But uh... <laughs> you pulled the hezzy <laughs> hoe on you, Ross. Sorry, Sorry, Ross. Hey. He was trying to get us. On. Hey. Soon, soon. I promise you soon, all right? Um, but to answer That's the awesome. question, uh, yeah, I mean, the thousandth video, we're going to have to do something really special, mm-hmm. of course, right? You know, I mean, uh, for when you guys have your thousandth episode, if you haven't already, have you hit the... No, 623 was today. You got you got about a year or so to go until then. So when you hit, because you upload every day. So I mean, Yeah, not a math guy, though. But we're not I mean, counting, like, I was, organizational... I was told there's no... Math and journalism, so don't worry about that, Ross. Okay. Yeah, right. that's why we, we went that route too. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's yeah, it's definitely gonna be uh, quicker on YouTube to a thousand though than episodes because we put out yeah. like the value rankings, the postcast as well counts. So, um, but in terms of like full episodes of, of LOSB, yeah, six twenty three. But I think it was four oh five. So we've only done I think two hundred of them on YouTube because yep. again, oh, we were even oh. late adapting. We started oh. podcasting well before we started on youtube whereas for you was it different like were podcasts even a thing in 2013 yeah so i'll just answer the question real quick for the thousand video we're going to do like a special thing going through the years of sense talk as you guys oh, already cool. saw cool. yeah i mean you got all that 949 videos a lot of different you like, need this entire team you know? to cut that up man just yeah. to sift through oh, all yeah. that footage. I mean, it's and we're talking maybe months of footage i mean the videos weren't two minutes long they were like five ten fifteen minutes unedited just me rambling so i can't i can't imagine what i was saying in those videos but i we're gonna do something special with that i don't know how long it's gonna be my producer uh, uh laddie be calling wanted to do a mini documentary potentially i didn't really know how i felt about that i thought it'd be a little cheesy i mean i'm not oprah i'm not you know wayne gretzky i'm not exactly documentary worthy at the moment but at the same time i mean a 10 15 minute special video might be in the works so uh once again the scoop will be uh, brought to you here first once Ooh. we finalize that uh, can you repeat the second question? Just so uh, I rambling, I forgot. Sorry. Um, Pilsy, what was my second question? I, I've already forgotten it. Uh, nice. so, so, so people we, are smashing the steering wheel right now. Um, so we could, uh, where, where, where I wanted to kind of take it is I'll remember. We've, we've gone through the past. We've gone through where you are now. Where is your kind of, I don't want to say end goal. Cause that, that assumes that you want to stop one day, but where is kind of your, your your step that you want to hit and you want to be at like do you do you have that far in the future kind of set and uh, goals ready or are you just taking it as it goes well i'm a very competitive person Uh, obviously i want to do better in everything i do i think you guys have to feel the same way i mean you know obviously we're not competing what you and i but in terms of just views and stuff of course you want to get views of course you want to you know get subscriptions follows whatever um but you know look uh the end game is this I don't think there's an end game. I mean, yeah. I'm if there's an end game, it's right now. I've had Bruce Garriott, Dean Brown, so, so many great people on the show, sense prospects. I mean, five years ago, I would never even imagine these people would have had any interest talking to me on my right. show. So there's no end game. I think I've reached the point where I'm like, wow, I've gone way farther than I thought I would. Let's see what happens next. I'm just going day by day, uh, trying to put good content out, uh, trying to be as genuine as I can. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to be fake out there, right? I'm trying to just be as genuine as I can, as honest as I can, and really put out my opinions there. So, you know, I'm going to just keep on doing what I'm doing, never going to stop what I'm doing, really. So, you know, it kind of ties into my career path. I mean, I want to become a journalist or go into communications. So, you know, until I get a career job, uh, whether that's with a broadcaster or, you know, in a, another field in communications, I mean, this is probably going to go on for a while. Um, so 
I mean, obviously, like with the subscriptions and followers and everything I just said, obviously you want to grow and grow and grow. But more importantly, I just like having these fun conversations with people. I mean, the Dean Brown interview, that went for 95 minutes, 95 minutes. <laughs> I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe he wanted to, to talk for 95 minutes with me. Oh, but, yeah. But, you know, you guys know this. When you do an interview, you sometimes have to scale it back or cut it back or during the interview. You don't want to go on for too long because, you know, you know, you don't want to put out a two hour thing. That's impossible to edit. That's impossible to really watch the whole thing. But sometimes you have to realize it's for your own enjoyment too. And with the Dean Brown interview, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I don't care about how long this goes for. I don't care how long it takes to edit. I want to enjoy this conversation. It was that good. So that's really, I guess the end game for me is just to have more and more and more fun conversations like this, like the Dean Brown one where, you know, we can just talk sense hockey and just talk about ourselves too. It's just a fun time. So, uh, there's no real end game. I mean, it's just keep on building, I guess you can call it. Awesome. I love that. Since I forgot my question, I'll hit you with a free idea for your thousandth episode. I want, yeah. and I couldn't put it together. So it's one of those, like, I'm an ideas guy, but not always, um, a net, what do you call it? Like actually doing it, uh, guy. So a book, because obviously you're, you're telling the story of Sense Talk, and I want the pages flipping through, and I want to see one photo of you every year, because I want to see how you're maturing through the years from yeah. 10 years old to 20. I think that that would be so cool if you could put it out. Just like, like the change in your voice pitch, facial <laughs> hair, uh, hairstyle, side, like the, the growth that will just be yeah. wild. That, that like a five so second clip. And even like if you have something of saying like, welcome to Sense Talk, I'm Brandon Plant. But like welcome when you're 10, two when you're 11, like – as it's going through and then when you get to the last page oh, it flips again and then it dives in and then you start playing <laughs> clips from throughout yeah your well, team you can handle that come on yeah come oh, on. we got we no got pressure, some fellas. masterminds frankly behind Good. the scenes here i mean we got some great editors some great uh, graphic designers uh in terms of those videos i won't lie with you very often i do not watch the old clips because and i encourage you to do it if you're watching this but my voice, the way it, it – I mean, man, I sounded like a mouse. It was unbelievable how high-pitched it was. And I, I don't know if I have a deep voice now, but it's certainly much deeper than it was before. I, uh, after you're done watching this and any other Locked On stuff and Sense Talk stuff, go to the first clips on our channel on Sense Talk. Do yourself a favor. Have a good laugh. It's unbelievable the way it's there changed you go. in the last 10 years. So good, man. So and I like good. that idea too. I might have to steal that from you. Don't steal a free idea. I told you. There you go. It's like yeah, one of those know. outdoor libraries. Just take a book and, and <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's awesome. Well, we can't have you on without uh, discussing your thoughts on, on the Senators team going into next yep. season. I know the talk is all about a top four defenseman and, and, uh, and how much they need it. What do you think their ceiling is without? Let's say they go into the year with what the lineup is looking at right now. What, what would your expectations be? Right now without a top four? Playoff Correct. bubble. We're talking, uh, you, you know, there's there's a conversation to be had here. Is Florida going to make the playoffs? Is Boston going to make the playoffs? But more importantly, will five teams out of the Metro make the playoffs? Because if five teams make it out of the Metro, we're not making the playoffs. And there's a very good chance five make it out of the Metro. Washington just got Darcy Kemper. The Penguins, well, they're the Penguins. They got so, so many great players. I mean, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But even without a top four, I mean, I can see Lassie Thompson filling out uh, that top first uh, that first pairing role with Tom Shabon in the top four. And I'd be more than comfortable with that. People forget. Everyone's like, is he ready? Is he not ready? He's a first round pick from like 2018, 2019. Give him a shot. Otherwise, Travis Hamnick can step in there for the, the short term gap. It's not a big deal. He looked fine. So playoff bubble in the conversation in April. That's where I see them without a top four. That top six, uh, you know, you got Kachuk, Norris, Batherson, Giroux, Debrinkat, Stutzla. I mean, I kind of lit, you know, uh, Leafs Twitter on fire a couple months back. But I I honestly think that's the best top six in Ontario and one of the better ones in the Eastern Conference, if not the NHL. So certainly playoff bubble. Oh, and let's talk about the goaltending tandem. Let's that's talk. Look at this guy cross-promoting his show. <laughs> this <Little> guy. <laughs> but, I mean, look, I think arguably the biggest acquisition this uh, – and we're probably going to talk about it, so sorry about that, guys. But Cam Talbot, star goaltender. Multiple times in his NHL career, 60-plus games in a season. Talk about longevity. Talk about, uh, you know, experience and credibility. So, you know, I, I'm certainly expecting a playoff push. Yeah, we're pretty stoked about uh, the goalie tandem here. As a goalie-friendly show, we love our attendees. So, I guess I'll, I'll lead into the question you you almost answered there, and maybe you have a different answer. But what was the most impactful move that Pierre Dorian uh, made this summer? Whether it's 
sign, trade, extension, what have you. This could be a hot take, but it's Cam Talbot without a doubt. I mean, I really? love Anton wow. Forsberg. I love Anton Forsberg, and I think he can have another great year. I think it's possible. I think it's likely. But let's take a look at the bigger picture, okay? Forsberg, in a majority of his career, has not put up 915 and below three goals against average. And once again, I love Forsberg, and I'm confident that he's going to be able to put up those numbers again. Goalies are fluky like that. I, I think he has a home here in Ottawa. That being said, there's no guarantees. Philip Gustafson, love the kid. He has some potential. But if you're trying to make a playoff push in the next couple of years, you need a safe bet. And Cam Talbot is as safe of a bet as he can get. Like I said, 60-plus games multiple times in his career in a season. I mean, 60 games for uh, for a goaltender is wild. You don't really see that often in the National Hockey League anymore. It's the norm for Cam Talbot's career. Uh, on top of that, numbers are pretty solid throughout his entire career. You know, he's always been a solid goaltender, very dependable. And when you put a tandem of Cam Talbot and Anton Forsberg out there every night, where it's either Talbot or Forsberg in there, you got a chance to win. And even with without a Giroux or without a Debrinkat, if you add a Talbot with Forsberg, that team is still a playoff caliber team, in my opinion, purely against the win. Goaltending always rectifies uh, defensive errors, which we know were a plenty last year with Ottawa. So adding a goaltender like Cam Talbot adds, uh, you know, experience and solidifies the tandem to give them a chance to win every night, which frankly we haven't seen since Craig Anderson. So I know it's a bit of a hot take. Obviously Giroux bringing him home is fantastic to bring cat. The cat is unbelievable, but no Talbot is by far, it's the most sneaky underrated, but I think biggest move they've made. I like that. What is, uh, at what point will you start getting nervous if the wins aren't adding up as quickly as you would like? I mean, you got to say 15 games or so. I mean, after that, we're talking the first month, month and a half. If you lose, let's say 15 games, you're not winning at least eight of those, eight, nine. You're not around 500, okay? If you're not around 500 by the first 15 games, I mean, DJ Smith, he's a great guy. I've only heard great things. He's loved in the, I mean, loved in that locker room. Um, he, I, I give him a lot of credit for building that, uh, you know, the environment and the new um, I, identity of the team and the organization. I give him a lot of credit for that, but you need results in this league. You need results. And, you know, with the team that we've assembled with the goaltending, even with the defensive core, Jake Sanderson coming in, potentially all the acquisitions we brought in offensively, there's no excuse to not be at least eight, seven wins in, in your 15 games, uh, regardless of your opponents, you should be winning at least half of them. And if you're not, you got to fire DJ Smith, unfortunately, and you got to make some changes because you don't invest. We're, we're almost, Five to seven million dollars now away from the cap pit. You don't invest seventy-two to seventy-five million in a year without expectations, and there's a lot of expectations now. So uh, yeah, fifteen games. Other than that, you know, I hope it doesn't happen though. I hope I hope DJ Smith sticks around because I think uh, I think he works well with the team, and I think the team loves him. So hoping it doesn't come to that. But fifteen games, and I, I would love to hear what you guys have to say on this. But fifteen games, I think, would be the appropriate limit for uh, whether or not we should fire him or not. Yeah, I, well, I think that's when his seat starts getting hot. I, I would go, what's it, it's the American Thanksgiving that typically yeah. is... Uh, is that's, uh, that's like mid-November, yep. Yeah, I want to say like November 14th, give or take, around November there. November 24th, it says right here. 24th, on okay. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so I think the Canadian home opener is on the 18th. October. So the season starts on October 13th for the Sens. So yeah, about 22 game mark for me is where, that's where the axe yeah. comes down, but... Yeah. Where I start getting a little jittery is, yeah, 15 games if they haven't won. You said eight. I would almost say 10. Yeah, no okay. back-to-backs. Yeah. No back-to-backs yeah. and a lot of home games. I think 10 of their first 16 games this year at home. Well, you got, a bit you of a weaker schedule to start as well. So yeah. they got to take Buffalo, advantage of yeah. that. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of with you guys on that. Uh, my next question will go from goaltending to defense because defense is still the hot topic about the Sens. Who do you see playing with Jake Sanderson? Because Jake Sanderson, he's going to be a pivotal part of whether this decor works or not. But putting a rookie defenseman into a top four role without a great partner, that's a lot to ask of a kid. So who do you see uh, matching up best uh, with him? And not just picking the best guy, but as the decor uh, unity, who do you have with Sanderson? Well, it looks like this. I mean, in an ideal world, you put Artem Zub with Shabbat because they look flawless with one another. And Shabbat never looked better in his career, frankly, when he was playing with uh, Artem Zub. Um, the problem is Shabbat's such a good player. You can put him with anyone and he's going to produce. So with Ottawa's issue in the top four where they don't really have that many good guys on the right side at that caliber in the top four, you have to give Shabbat a lesser player. I'm not saying Zub is, you know, the best player in the world, but I mean, he's 
probably the best right-handed shot defenseman they've got. So I would put him with Sanderson purely because, look, Sanderson, you know, he's a top five pick, all right? He's going to be a great player, potentially generational, superstar, all that stuff, the fun stuff, right? But look, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantees. Uh, when you put him with a guy like Artem Zub, it's going to help calm down his game and let him go a little bit offensively too. You know, Jake Sanderson is known for his great, you know, two-way game skating abilities, but obviously he has some offensive abilities too. I don't have to tell you guys. You guys were following North Dakota like crazy. You guys know how good Jake Sanderson is offensively. He has great hands. And Artem Zub being next to him would give him an anchor that allows him to kind of play more comfortable in his style of game without worry of uh, an error in the back. He knows that Artem Zub will be there. And Zub seems to be able to play off of others pretty well. Um, so I think Zub would be the perfect candidate purely because he can help stabilize and, you know, help Sanderson grow into his own game instead of making him play a different game, kind of like what we saw with other defensive prospects over the years. So I think an easy answer will say, uh, we'll say Zub, yep. but you know, Hey, you know, if they, if they want to go and bring in like a Lassie Thompson, put a couple of rookies on one pairing. I mean, I don't know how Ooh. defensively sound that would be, but it might be fun to watch, but yeah, once again, Zub is probably Sanderson. What about you guys? Yeah, I got him with Zub. Yeah, yeah it's hard, hard to argue that, right? I mean, you look at who's going to make Shabbat the best he can be, and that's obviously priority number one for me after watching yeah. other guys anchor him down. Uh, the past couple of years, you want to see him kind of be given a chance to succeed now as he's going into year six. Crazy to think, man, that Shabbat's been around for so long and, and really had to battle through Ron Hainsey and battle through... Nikita Zaitsev's tenures uh, on his right side. So I think that out of respect for a guy who's done so much for your team and battled through some some pretty dark days, I think you'd like to give him Zub. But then, again, you're so weak behind it on the for right second. side. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think that if, just to give a different answer, I'll say Nick Holden would be my second choice to play with Sanderson because yeah. he's just going to play it simple and, uh, and maybe allow Sanderson to, you know, flourish a little bit more offensively versus, I guess, Hamannick's probably the only real other choice because you're not playing Branstrom with, with Sanderson no. to start out. So just to give a different answer, I'll say that uh, we'll get uh, the fun uncle of the team here, Nick Holden to, uh, to jump up with uh, like, he made Artem Zub smile. You can see right by uh, oh, there, Nick there, left hand. Right, so yeah. uh, no, no, that's great. So I hope they bring back the helmet just as an aside, but if not it's not a- Zub playing, uh, playing there, I'll, I'll say Nick Holden. Uh, Cause then obviously you, you get a stretch out. I think it's a, a fine top four, but this is what I want to leave you with, um, Brandon. I guess I have to specify at Sens Talk <laughs> underscore on Twitter. Go subscribe to the Sens Talk channel on YouTube. We're going to put this is obviously YouTube exclusive. We're going to put in the description there the link so you can just one click bang and go Thank check you. out. Make sure you scroll all the way down and go see some 2013 humor down there. But now <laughs> it's all that, serious, man. man. I said humor, but it's all serious now. Ooh. Ooh, if okay. the Senators trade for a top four defense, when I know you've done a video on Jacob Chikrin, I want to take a, a name away from it. A top four defenseman. And sure, you can say, I can't take away a name because then it's a contract or other things. Sure. A top four defenseman, a legitimate top four defenseman. Who is untouchable? And I'll follow up with asking you this or that. But who is untouchable for you in a trade? On this team right now, the Ottawa Senators. Uh, well, I mean, it goes without saying, obviously, Kachuk, Norris, Stutzla. I mean, those guys are obviously off the board. Yeah. Well, let's take out Athens the top six. The, board. Let's take the, out top the top six, six. forward. Okay, they're, they're not moving. They're not moving. The unfortunate reality is you're not getting a Jacob Chikrin or a player of his value. And I know this for a fact. You guys know this for a fact, too. Obviously, Laleem's Martian, you know, the streets were rumbling. He said similar things, too. Um, look, the streets were rumbling, and they're right. You have to give up a Shane Pinto, a really Greg, or a Mad Sogar type of prospect, plus more uh, first-round picks and more for a guy or a player like Jacob Chikrin. Now, if I'm Ottawa and I've made all these big moves, Claude Giroux, Alex Debrinkat, Talbot, you know, you kind of already went all in. You might as well go all the way in and put your both feet into the pool and get a guy like Jacob Chikrin. But I understand the hesitancy. I mean, really, Greg, I think he has a higher ceiling than Shane Pinto. I know uh, uh, Pinto Beans is not going to like that. My apologies. But <laughs> uh, I think really, Greg has um, a phenomenal phenomenal offensive ability and a pesky side to him too that you don't really see a lot in terms of skilled players um and Shane Pinto I think he's could be a great top nine guy too but I don't want to give up either of them so you know I mean they're not untouchable in a trade for Jacob Chikrin of course because it's Jacob Chikrin but I mean I don't know if you want to make that trade that's the thing I'm looking at it like this yes Obviously, Kachuk, Norris, all these guys are untouchable, and you're going to have to give up really Greg and Shane Pinto. But 
Would you really want to do that? That's my thing. I know I just said you want to put both feet into the pool, but then you have to give up multiple first round picks, really Greg, Shane Pinto, whatever it is. So um, to really answer your question, I guess I would say one of really Greg or Shane Pinto, untouchable. Uh, one of Lassie Thompson, JBD, untouchable. And then the draft picks are free range. I mean, yeah. if you're if you're making specifications on you cannot touch one of Pinto or Greg, you cannot touch one of JBD or Lassie Thompson. Um, and you're giving up a guy like Roby Gerventi, most likely, who, uh, you know, is obviously somebody I wouldn't want to give up either. But realistically, that's likely who would have to be given up in that type of situation. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I would do there. It's OK, you can't take this guy, but you could take this guy and you can have these picks. So long answer short, um, you know, one of Pinto, one of Greg, one of JBD, one of Lassie Thompson, two out of those four I would keep here. And the rest you can kind of debate and negotiate in the trade. So you would move one of Pinto or Greg before moving the 2023 first round pick? No, I would definitely no? trade that pick. At this yeah. point in the rebuild, and I'm sorry if I alluded to that, my bad, but at this point in the rebuild, there's there's way more value in a proven commodity like Shane Pinto or Ridley three first round pick. Uh, look, do I want it to be another Matt Duchesne situation? No, but you got to take leaps in this game, especially when you're a small market team like Ottawa. So if you're giving up, uh, you know, one of Pinto or Greg, you know, giving up one first round pick, you know, it shouldn't be much more than that. So uh, long answer short, once again, I would rather give up multiple picks and a Pinto or really Greg, no doubt about it. So just to add, add on to that, though, yeah, and you mentioned the Duchesne trade. Are you are you top 10 protecting? Are you putting protection clauses into that or how are we feeling there? Well, it depends. Once again, if you're giving up a really Greg or Shane Pinto, both of those are first round picks, basically. I mean, Shane Pinto was drafted in the first two picks of the second round. That's the yeah. first round pick, ladies and gentlemen. So you're talking about two first round picks, uh, Hobie Baker, finalist, and uh, you know one of the better players for Team Canada at the le- recent World Juniors, who's been dominating in the WHL. So if you're giving up one of those players in this deal, you better t- have a top 10 protection because how much value are you going to give up? I mean, you know, I love Jacob Schicker and I, I, you know, I love, you know, I, I understand the need for a top four, but how desperate do you need to be? Are you really about to give up some of the best prospects in your pool, which makes it one of the better prospects pools still plus more future assets that are going to be future first round picks. The way I look at it is like this. If you give a Ridley Greg or Shane Pinto plus two first round picks, you're actually trading three first round picks because Pinto and Greg were first round picks. So uh, top 10 protection for sure. And that's definitely might be what the holdup is. In reality, if Arizona is offered one of Pinto or Greg, but another first round pick included in that, but they have to have a top 10 protection. Why would they do that for themselves? So I think that's kind of what the holdup is. I understand for Ottawa, um, they got a lot of prospects. They want to make a move, but there's some prospects you just don't want to move. And that's certainly the case with the names that I've already mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Now, fi- final question for me, we'll end on a bit of a fun one here. A lot of off-season addition to, to this team. I don't know, maybe you are already have done this, but if you haven't got a new jersey, whose name are you getting and what color for this upcoming season? Yeah, so it's funny. My last birthday, which was the 20th, I'm turning 21 in a couple of months, but nice. my dad was going to get me a Brady Kachuk, uh, you know, black jersey, like with the new like 2D logo. Yep. Um, but for some reason you have to buy the patch separate on, uh, on the auto team shop.ca, whatever it is. So we're going to probably go in, in the, you know, when the season starts, go to the Canadian tire center and just get it done there. Uh, it's probably easier, maybe a little cheaper too with shipping. Um, but a Jersey I would love, I mean, I'm waiting for the reverse retros. If there's something yes. really nasty, yeah. really sick, I'm obviously copying one of those. I mean, uh, the red ones were cool, but I already have a 3d red one uh, and I already have the, O2. So if Ottawa does something really wacky or they bring back um kind of similar to the one behind you, Pill Z, you know, the uh with the one the black one with the white stripes or whatever, if they can bring something like that, or even the Senegal, I'm buying mm-hmm. that 100 Whose name? Whose name? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh doesn't have to be a new guy, could be a guy you just don't have yet. Yeah, no, I'm I'm probably thinking Tim Stutzla. I mean, this cool. kid is so dynamic, he's so young, he's such a a likable character and he's only going to become more well-renowned around the league he's so good with the media too i mean he's going to be one of the faces of the franchise for a while and you know i don't want to get a classic name especially if i'm ever getting a kachuk you know or i don't want i want to get somebody that's a little out of the realm you know you always hear the kachuks and shabbats which makes sense 
I want to get something a little different. And maybe I'll I'll get the white away one too with Tim Stutzla. I think that'd be pretty sick. All right. Well, maybe we'll see you wearing it at the home open. Are we going to see you at the game? I hope so. I know there is a wedding I might have to attend. So I don't know if I'm going to be what? able to on a go. Tuesday. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Uh, I, I also got a wedding Holy. on the November 12th. I got a fa- I, my cousin's getting married on November 12th. My birthday's on the 13th. So a couple of weddings here at some unfortunate times, but we'll see what happens. All right. If, well, in if the I'm meantime, there, I'll let you know though. Let absolutely. Know. Right. Well, in the meantime, everyone's going to be subscribed on YouTube at Sense Talk and on Twitter, Sense Talk underscore. Brandon, thanks for doing this, man. We really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Keep on doing great things, guys. Love the work you guys are doing. And it's always a pleasure to get to speak to you guys. 